everyone loves a double exposure effect, and it's one of the effects I recommend most to beginners. I mean, they're easy, they're fun, and you can create countless combos. And since you can create and nest multiple masks onto a single layer, Affinity Photo is an even better option for double exposure effects compared to Photoshop. If you don't know me, I'm Abby Sparza, and I've been doing digital art for over 10 years now, and all the resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements. Get unlimited downloads of photos and fonts, all with a super simple commercial license. A plus a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. You can subscribe now with the link down in the description. So this first step is all about prepping our subject and creating a few base masks. I have a solid layer already made here in a light gray color, and I have my selection already done just to save some time using the uh, selection brush tool here. But once you have that, we can add our mask and then right click refine mask. And we just have to drag the refine brush over the subject's edges and let Affinity Photo do the rest. Now we're going to duplicate our subject using Control J two times. And we're going to set the first copy to lighten and the second to screen. Now let's create a new empty mask and nest that inside of the screen layer. We'll be masking all of this back in later. Right now, your image is going to look like a typical extracted image, even though we have all these layers here. But now we want to paste the environmental photo in between the normal and enlightened subject layers. In this case, we have this nice uh, forest. We're going to duplicate the subject's layer mask and nest it into this forest layer, masking it to the shape of our subject. Now we wanna make sure we have the move tool active, and then we wanna look up here and check lock children. Uh, this will make it so we can move the layer without moving the mask around. So we're going to use that move tool to position the forest in a way that looks interesting. Try and look for clever shapes and visual elements that kind of match up. You also want the areas of the bright white sky to be close to the edge of the panda, and that's how you're going to get those spots of negative space. It won't look perfect, so don't worry, and we can always adjust this placement as we go as well. In fact, I think this is looking perfectly fine. We have our main elements. Next, we need to do some image adjusting using adjustment layers. First, let's nest a curves adjustment layer into the lighten layer here. And we want to create what's called an S curve, which is where you bring up the highlights and bring down the shadows, creating an S like shape in the curve here. We're going to copy this curves layer and nest it into the hidden uh, screen layer. And then we'll create another S curve to put in the forest. Again, bringing up the highlights and lowering the shadows. These settings will change image to image, but you do want your sky to be a very uh, light, almost white color. And because I want this forest to really blend into our orange red panda here, I'm going to add an HSL adjustment layer to the forest image and do a plus 13 hue shift, which will make that forest feel more orangey. And we're already looking a little better, but now we have to add new masks to both the normal and lightened subjects. as well as the forest layer here. And we're going to mask away different areas from each mask to blend the subject and its environmental image. I recommend starting with the forest layer, masking it away from the face and paws, and removing the forest from parts of the tail to create that uh, ringed tail effect. This is of course specific to a panda, but the face and paws are always a good start. Then we can mask away from the normal layer to remove any annoying edges or hard, weird, splotchy spots 
uh, like on the pause edge here. And if any areas are looking a little too bright or solid, we can mask away from this lighten layer. We are ignoring the screen layer for now. And you really want to take your time here. It's not hard, but you can really kind of have a good uh, back and forth with it. Masking things in and bringing them back using white, masking them back out using black. There really isn't much uh, method to the madness here. We're just going back and forth from these three layers until we like what we have. And in fact, I like what I have now. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, but we don't have to use just one forest layer. We can actually duplicate our current forest here. And then flip and transform it, resize and remask it to create a tree line right on the back of our subject. Again, we're using the light gray skyline uh, to really blend the image into the light gray background. That's how we're getting these edges here. And unless you get really lucky with the shape of your forest or environment, you're likely going to have to do this to really sell the effect that the animal or pandas in this case, a body is really made of trees. This is looking good. Now, remember that screen layer? We're going to use that to highlight and bring even more fur detail onto our panda. Mask in the areas you want to brighten or uh, have some more of that red panda's detail. If you find this layer is too solid or bright, I'll use the curves layer to deepen the shadows or even pop another S curve on top of the already uh, existing one. And the rest of this are all optional details. I'm going to add in some flying birds using this layer with a light, light background. So all I have to do is set the layer to multiply and then lower the opacity to around 85% or so. And then of course use the move tool to uh, transform it and make, maybe make a couple duplicates. This really helps sell that double exposure effect. It also makes the panda seem giant, which I love. And then we can wrap this up with a quick color grade by creating a curves layer, going into the red channel, bringing down the highlights and pulling up the shadows. And this is going to bring red into those shadows and blue onto the highlights. And to make it a bit more punchy, I'm going to add a vibrance adjustment layer set to 55% vibrance and 12% saturation, just for, uh, you know, an added uh, pinch of color. And that is all it takes. If that wasn't enough, though, you could check out some of the other videos that Envato Plus Plus has to offer. If you liked this video, uh, thank you very much. Consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you still need to. And remember to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and of course, tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.